It's entirely possible that the coolest thing you ever make on your laser will be a thing called a living hinge. And if you don't know what that is, then stick around. How's it going everybody? I'm Steve and I make everything and welcome back to my channel where together we focus on making your world using modern workshop technologies. And as I mentioned in the, in the lead in here, we're going to make a living hinge in this video. And what those are is just a way to take uh, a, a very rigid material like eighth inch plywood and bend it in a very tight arc. And I'll show you how to do that. It's actually quite simple. And I know there's tools online where you can type in a bunch of dimensions and you'll get a living hinge created for you. But we're gonna do this from first principles. I believe if you're going to learn how to use, use your laser properly, you should always learn the first principles of, of anything. So we're gonna make one of these by hand in this video. And it, it, it honestly won't take very long. It's, it's really not that hard, even though some, some people you know, go to the trouble to create these, these online tools. So anyway, let's get going on this. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through this entire uh, piece, but what I did was I created two end pieces that are 50 millimeters along the horizontal, and then there's a 37 millimeter diameter circle. So the circumference of that, if you do some math, is uh, about 54.97 millimeters, and then another 50 millimeters. And I also put these small tabs on here, which will be used to, to mount and glue these pieces into the, into the outer piece. So again, I did some math, so it's 150 millimeters, 54.97 millimeters, and another 50 millimeters, and we come up with a piece that we're gonna wrap around it, which is really just a rectangle, and you can see its width is 154.97. The six here in the third decimal place is just some rounding that Inkscape does, uh, so don't worry about it. And then I, I also put the rectangles in here for the slots for, for these tabs to fit into. Now, in the very center, I have a line here, and this line is broken up and this is this will be a cut line and it ha it's in the center of of this piece we're going to wrap around and you can see it's made up of of line segments that are 30 millimeters a five millimeter gap and so on and another 30 millimeters so they're just equally spaced so what you can do is if your height is different then just use a different height for these lines and figure out how many you want and you can do some basic math uh, like I said, I won't go into it too deep. Now the next line over, which is three millimeters over, will be the next cut in that living hinge. And all I did was clone this four segment line here and move it up a combination of half of this line, which is 15 millimeters plus half of the five millimeter spacing on it. And you come up with some, you know, 17.25 kind of number and moved it up and then and then filled in the line. So we, st we have, in this case, we have three segments that are 30 millimeters and the two on the ends are equidistant at 12.5. So that's how it works. Now, when we wanna make our living hinge, I know the circumference of, of this arc that we'll, we'll wrap around. And what I did was just put two guidelines on either side of the center line. So I know where to stop my, my living hinge. Now, all I really have to do to create my hinge is take this piece and clone it. So I'll, I'll just duplicate these two lines. And now I wanna move them, they're three millimeters apart and I wanna make the next one three millimeters further down. So what I really need to do to make this, to make this happen is move this by six millimeters. Now I can do a whole bunch of mental math here or you can use a trick in Inkscape which you may or may not have known existed. And I can just say minus six and you'll see it put, it, it put those lines there. And I can just keep going with this and I'll use the keyboard shortcut this time uh, in Inkscape to, to duplicate it. And again, minus six and another duplicate and another minus six and uh, one more should fit. And another minus six and there we have it. So that's half of our hinge and, and I can do the other half uh, you know, subsequently on the other side. And what you get out of this is, uh, you know, something that looks like, 
you know, like a, like a, a hinge. And then all we'll do is just throw this at our laser, get it cut, all these pieces, and uh, you'll see how easily this, this uh, and how amazing, honestly, this actually works. So uh, I'll just finish this up and I'll export it to my, to my laser software and, and then we'll, we'll do the laser cut and you'll see how easy it is. Okay, so I won't bore you with the details of, of laying this out on the laser. Basically grab a piece of wood, mask it off if you want a, a nice clean edge and cut it. It's all cuts in this case. There's no, there's no engraving. So, uh, you know, you can just fire away and you'll get these three pieces out at the end. And uh, so I'll show you my laser work and then I'll show you how we put it together. Okay, so just before we get going here on the assembly, let me just show you what we actually created. And you can see it's really just a board that had a bunch of slots cut in it, but look what we can actually do with this. This is amazing. Uh, you can grab this, you can flex it, I can bend it almost in half. And you see people will make book covers out of these if you want a nice engraved uh, wooden book cover. Uh, but pretty much anything you would ever want to do uh, with anything flexible. And this, this works with other materials as well. Uh, you, you, know, you can get reasonable uh, results with even things like acrylic if you want to have uh, you know, some flexible piece of acrylic. So give it a try. Anyway, let's put it together. Okay, we're going to start just you know, in grabbing one of our edge pieces and inserting it into uh, the two slots on the side. And we'll do the other one as well. And you, you'll see, you know, once we, once we do this, it, it, we can just wrap over the, the board around the, the edge pieces. And when you get it lined up properly, uh, you know, and it's a bit of a struggle here because we're trying to put three different pieces together at the same time. But once you get it aligned properly, you'll see that everything just kind of snaps into place and it's, uh, it, it actually holds by itself, which is, which is quite nice. And you, you'll see this particular piece is not really useful for anything, but you see how easily it goes together. We could glue it up or we could have easily put a, an end on this and a latch and made something that opens, uh, gluing only one side. So you can do some really cool things here. This is really just a demo piece and it's, it's not really practical, but you can see the value of using living hinges. So there you go, that's, that's how you make a living hinge from first principles. Now again, you can build these things from uh, online tools. Uh, I'll put this design online on my GitHub uh, repository and you can go pull it down and build this exact thing if you want. It's not particularly practical for anything, but you know, you can at least play with it and, and try this on your own. And you know, the next natural step here would be to make this an enclosed box with maybe a hinge lid using a living hinge. And then you may want to do some engraving and even painting on top of that. And if you're interested in, in how to mask uh, some engraving, I'll put a video up over up on the side here. And you can go learn how to do that. If you do, I'll see you over there. And, uh, you know, you'll, you can create some really neat things with just a few basic concepts here. So we'll call that a video and hopefully you got something out of it and, and take away a bit of knowledge. And uh, as always, go make your world and I'll see you next time.